Welcome back, everyone. On today's show, why is Porsche investing in synthetic gas? What EV claims 1,000 miles of range? And guess which luxury brand dressed its cars in ugly holiday sweaters? I'm Dana Simone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Buckle up. So we're gonna start the day with something fantastic. As in so unbelievable, it's probably improbable. Aptera Motors recently unveiled a production three-wheeled EV called the Paradigm, which supposedly has up to 1,000 miles of range. It can also be partially charged via its solar roof panels. Meaning, if you don't drive more than 45 miles a day, you might never have to plug it into the grid. But that only works on bright, sunny days, which, don't exist in the Midwest. Or with DC fast charging, you can juice it for 500 miles within an hour. Some other fantastic figures, a 0.13 coefficient of drag, zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. The heaviest model weighs 2,200 pounds and $100. That's what a refundable deposit will cost you. Pricing for the Aptera Paradigm starts at $25,900 and climbs to $46,000 for a fully optioned Paradigm Plus. Fair warning, Aptera has been talking about solar-powered vehicles since last year. And well, being a startup, they've also been bankrupt before. Back to vehicles that aren't make or break via the clouds. Porsche has made a significant investment toward developing a synthetic and sustainable fuel that can replace gasoline. In a partnership with Siemens and other international companies, this pilot project involves not only engineering a new e-fuel, but also distribution via an industrial scale plant based in southern Chile. How does it work? Well, using wind energy to keep things carbon neutral, the plant will split H2O into H and O. They'll take that H and add in some CO2 from the atmosphere and make meth, methanol, meth, methanol, yes. They'll convert methanol into gasoline. So what does that mean for you? Well, with major cities and even countries looking to ban fossil fuel burning vehicles in the next decade or two, these fake fuels could keep your classic cars running for even more years to come, especially if fuel stations are forced outside of town. The first phase is expected to yield 130,000 liters of e-fuels by 2022, and then increase to 55 million liters by 2024. By 2026, production is targeted at 550 million liters. It's not gas and it's not diesel. So e-fuels should help reduce our carbon footprint, even if we drive a car that utilizes an engine and not a battery pack. And perhaps it can even prevent the extinction of those flat sixes and V8s that we love, oh, so much. And tis the season of ugly holiday sweaters, and there's no reason you shouldn't wear one while classic car shopping. To give you a head start, Mercedes-Benz is getting into the sweater spirit. Via Facebook, the German automaker dressed a G-Wagon and an AMG GT in the hideous holiday fashion. Or maybe they're cute based on how much eggnog you've already consumed. And don't worry, these are just wraps. Like that ugly sweater that you think you're not wearing, it can be removed. Now go change. I'm gonna change too, because this is cute. At Haggerty, we have a buy what you love philosophy, which is why this year's bull market list continues to highlight collectible vehicles that we foresee gaining the most value in the next year. But remember, this isn't a crystal ball or get rich quick scheme. Our list spans a variety of segments, styles, and budgets. Without further ado, here's the roundup for 2021. Even at the starting price of $110,000, the Aston Martin V8 Vantage was called the cheap Aston, but its performance and handling were of the high end variety and its design continues to age well. 2005 through 2017 models in excellent condition are currently valued in the high 40s. Still looking fresh is the 2000 through 2006 Audi TT Quattro. A solid performer, the TT Quattro's price undercut that of its direct competitors. 
Radwood era cars have been seeing price increases lately. And the 1984 through 91 Ferrari Testarossa is turning heads again. And not only impressive at high speeds, the Testarossa continues to be a serviceable supercar. For the 2005 through 06 Ford GT, its initial $150,000 sticker price now looks like a bargain. A vehicle that was embraced by owners, tuners, and onlookers, the Ford GT is just a sight that doesn't get old. The Honda S600 and S800 from 1964 to 1970 was the then motorcycle maker's first foray into automobiles. And this rare and sophisticated sports car continues to steadily increase in value. A classic from the day it was built, the 2011 through 2012 Lexus LFA is essentially a sequel for the limited run 2000 GT from the 60s and is no less capable in meeting those sports car credentials. Considering how long a follow-up took to produce and only 500 were made, the LFA isn't expected to be upstaged anytime soon. To see the rest of the list and get more details, including values, go to Haggerty.com slash media. So that's all for today. I will be back tomorrow with the top news stories. Until then, stay safe and never stop driving. I did win an uh, ugly sweater contest wearing this last year. I was very proud of that. Ha, 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 ha.